Hi, my name is Alexa. I am here to discuss some of the ways you can declutter more easily and less painfully. I'm coming at this from the perspective of losing my mom a year ago and we lived together for basically all of my life and I'm still living in the same place amongst her possessions mixed in with mine and in the process of decluttering. My first tip is going to be tackle the easiest and largest items first, just because that creates the most visual clutter. In my case, that was a commode that was for the toilet, which we actually, um, she didn't end up really using. There was that, and there was also a shower bench. There was also a cane. Anything that's a walker or that kind of fashion, like something that is not for your use, but for the use of someone who had mobility issues or sickness. Something that was very curious, and I don't know how it works in other places, but when I had to bring my mother's medications to the pharmacy to have them dispose of them, they asked me to put all of those pills out of the pill bottles into a paper bag and you responsibly dispose of the labels that have your mother's information on them. So that was something. And then there were things that are basically trash and easy to declutter around the house, such as receipts, papers that serve of no use for you anymore, and that might be very, very old tax documents, anything that you just really, really don't need. Anything that they wore frequently while they were going to the hospital or in treatments when there was weight fluctuations, anything that was stained, had holes, looked very worn in. I disposed of that right away because a lot of those items actually brought me memories, especially once I knew she wasn't coming back from the hospital. I had to release those possessions because it was going to be a very difficult road ahead. Definitely have a relative come and help you or a friend from time to time. It doesn't always have to be the same person, but that, that's a later tip. The next thing I would say is to just really give yourself time to process and grieve while you're letting go of things. I found that a lot of things brought me emotions of anxiety, guilt, sadness, sometimes happiness, but you really need to like process those feelings um, I don't know, that's just my opinion. I think that's better than suppressing everything and not confronting it. It is very much like a band-aid that you rip off, except you're ripping it off very slowly as you're getting rid of one thing after another. It is very normal to feel strange attachments to possessions that you know that your loved one really enjoyed while they were alive or that they used frequently. You are the one who's attaching those values and those meanings to those objects. The person is not there to use them anymore. And if those items are not bringing you positive memories and if they are just making you feel anxious and sad, you need to slowly let go of those items. In order to be a little bit more objective about possessions, you'll want to ask yourself, will I use this? Am I using this? Will I be able to use this in the near future, realistically speaking? What purpose does this serve me? Do I have space for this possession anymore? Am I able to care for such item? For instance, I inherited a lot of plants and I actually got rid of quite a few of my mother's plants and I kept the ones that spoke to me, that felt precious to me. I just have so many positive memories of her tending to certain plants. I really like her Monstera. That's just an example. That item might also be a living thing not just a plant, but like a pet. Anything that needs to be taken care of, essentially. If you're not able to take care of it, you should either put it on Facebook Marketplace, donate it, let it go to someone you know, and that leads me into my next point. Try to release this fantasy that you're going to be satisfied with how you dispose of every one of their possessions. I, at first, was holding on to things because I really wanted to make sure that her favorite clothing items went to people who loved her, but some of those people don't want her things. Or maybe I was too overwhelmed with the amount of things that I had to declutter that I just couldn't wait for them to come around and pick it up. 
or didn't have the right moments to actually section off a batch of things that they would specifically like. So I had her best friend come over and come and pick out things that I didn't want and that I didn't mind if she took. But in other cases, I didn't have that opportunity. And what I did was I just donated them. You can get in touch with women's shelters if it is in the case of a mother or a sister that has passed away or a friend. If not, there are men's shelters or you can just donate or throw it out. I know that hurts to say, and it hurts to think that you're throwing out the things that your loved one loved and cherished and used, but they would want you to be happy and not feel suffocated by the sadness of their memory. You have to give yourself grace. So I mentioned this briefly before, but ask for help. It doesn't necessarily have to be someone who comes in to declutter for you and with you. It could be someone that helps drive you to go and drop things off at the Salvation Army or a donation center. Someone who can pick those items up from your place or make a few calls for you to kind of soften some of the after death chores that you have to do, so to speak, the, the quote unquote housekeeping. It's so wild how all of this stuff is expected of you. It's, I really hope this isn't the case for you, but in my case, I live alone in my city and I lived alone in my city with my mom and we did not have any family or very many friends to come in and help. It's really tough when you don't have people to lean on, but anyone, who is there, if you are able to lean on them, you would be surprised at the people who come out and are able to help you. Sometimes they're just people who come in, help you, and don't necessarily stay along for the entire grievancy. Do not be too prideful or too set in your ways to accept help in this moment of time because it is going to be more difficult than you anticipate. Another thing that I find helpful that I do just on the regular and basically in my non-grief related decluttering, it is helpful to keep a box in your entrance and just to fill it up as you go, maybe do five minutes to 30 minute declutters, put a timer on and just walk through your house, pick through the things that you want to let go of so that when it is time for you to go and donate, you have all those things already segregated, get them out of your home and have them out of your mind. If anything is extremely sentimental to you and you're having a difficult time letting it go, but you know it's not gonna be something that you're gonna keep to use, it's not something that you would like to wear, you can always take a picture of it before you let it go from multiple angles and put it in a memory folder on a hard drive. And I suggest don't visit it very much unless you really wanna have a cry sesh and get stuff out of your system. This bit is a little bit of a tangent, but one thing that I found that really helped me that's not really related to decluttering, but did help boost my ability to declutter. I did two vacations in the year, which I normally wouldn't have done, A, because I was caregiving for my mom full time by myself and B, because money, I did set aside some funds because of doing low buy and being conservative over the last couple of years while I was taking care of her to take vacations and get myself out of this environment. Sometimes you just need to take a walk. You just need to go see a friend. You need to maybe try something new out of the ordinary before you come back to your routine. But changing your environment will really have an effect on your mood because yes, of course, I still missed my mom when I was on vacation and I had these thoughts like, oh, she would love this place. Or whenever I'd go to a store, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I know my mom would love that shirt. But there was something about not being surrounded by her possessions that sort of gave me a little bit more relaxation or a break from the typical type of grief that I was experiencing while surrounded by the possessions in the apartment that we lived in together. You will never not feel sad about the person that you lost, but rearranging the apartment while decluttering was just 
a game changer for me. It helped me so much when I would come back home from work and come to a bedroom that was completely neutral and very different than the way that it was while I was taking care of my mom. If you are feeling that this is all so overwhelming and that you're having difficulty letting things go, like it's normal to have your off days, but you definitely still need to be functional and be able to take care of yourself, you should probably see a therapist or seek grief counseling. I personally haven't, but it was on my radar for a while and it still is. I feel like I might need to because of residual feelings, but therapy is always a good idea whenever it happens, as long as you find the right place and keep an open mind and are willing to at least try. If decluttering certain things seems too difficult right now, you can box them up, put them in storage, and tackle them later. I don't think you should wait too long though. Um, you might find that your feelings have changed, but if you're having trouble coping, you might just be reopening wounds a year later. So if that's why I think anything that you're immediately ready to declutter, declutter it as soon as possible. Those easy things, those things you're never going to use. As you work that decluttering muscle, especially during grief, you will be able to work through quite a few feelings, understand some of your pain points. It'll also help you grieve. Honestly, I, I grieved so much while I decluttered. It's already especially difficult just without grief intertwined because ultimately things really are just things and we are the ones who assign meaning to them. So keep the things that have the positive meanings to you and let go of the rest. And really don't beat yourself up for not having finished everything in the time that you imagined you would have finished it in. I had this unrealistic expectation that I would already be done and it has been 12 months since she has passed and I am not finished. I have linked a PDF of a list of things, a hundred things that you can declutter. They can apply to whether you are grieving or not. They can help set a guideline. Maybe you can pick one or two a day and make it your prerogative to work your way down the list as you go through your decluttering journey that will be in the link in the description box and in the pinned comment. Check out my decluttering videos if you are looking for inspiration. I post decluttering videos all the time and I have a playlist of my journey going through this grief period. I wish you all the best.